My dad is a Newcastle fan and my mum is Arsenal. Most of the family that we saw for the majority of our early life were all Arsenal fans. And we naturally just went with mum. The old London Colony, so where Watford train now, that was where Arsenal used to train. And there's a cricket club next to it, and my dad was playing cricket there one day. Me and my brothers were just wandering around, and they're a couple of years older than me. We followed a hedge, and we went through the hedge, and we saw Arsenal training, and it would have been 98, and Arsene Wenger was literally just standing there on the touchline, and the guys were all separate into groups, and it was amazing. You didn't have, like, um, camera phones and things like that, so the only thing that we had on us, my brother had a shirt, an Arsenal shirt on, so he got it signed. God, I would have been nine, I think, at that stage or something like that. I loved Emmanuel Petit. And I used to always wear my hair, like, tied up at the front and then down at the back like he did, with that kind of, like, top knot ponytail thing going on. I just remember us having, like, some real exciting players and flair players. Before it started to get a little bit, um, what's the word, more frustrating to be an Arsenal fan. I remember it being pretty toxic at Emirates at times. But bringing someone like Mikel Arteta in who understands the club, understands the fan base and the importance of matching those two back together and repairing that disconnect and having players at the club that he thinks suit the identity of the club. I don't think there's anyone better for the job in terms of what he's managed to do there. And then the football that he's playing, you can't, you can't just be a manager that's repaired a relationship. You have to obviously have performances on the pitch too. Odegaard! Saka, he's rolled it to Trossard. The marketing team really understand the connection between the area and the local businesses and the club. And there was something that they did during um, lockdown where they wanted to support the local businesses to make sure they didn't go under. And it was like a, an initiative between the club and, and these guys. I think having that spirit of your local area is really important, as well as like having players on the pitch who have come through your academy and making sure you keep some of that identity and understand who you are, because that's your fan base. And they want to be able to look at the players and they want to be able to look at the surrounding area and know that's a little bit of them. Bukayo Saka! Wow! Stunning goal! He's just so talented and quick and small. Gabriel letting it run! And Saka slides it in! The fact that he's come through the academy, he's a real Arsenal supporter. Saka in for Arsenal, scores! He really has all the ingredients to be a, a proper legend at the Emirates. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having us all down here. There's uh, loads of people in this room looking at your most intimate memories in the world of football, so I hope you don't mind us trying to get a little bit more information about you. Um, but this is adorable. This picture here, so this is age, we think eight or nine, do we? I'm not sure, I think it could be potentially a bit older. Wow, you look really, really happy and really proud. Were you always an Arsenal fan? Yeah, so obviously a day like this to come to the Emirates was, was really special for me. I think you can see it in my face. I feel like I still look a bit the same, though. Yeah, like, you, do you know do, what I'm saying? You do. Like, I know what strange. you mean. You just your hair's a little bit longer. Yeah. You're a sl you're a little bit more mature. But ultimately, if we did that, you're, you're exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> so your dad is Newcastle, right? Yeah. So is mine. Really? Yeah. So how come you're an Arsenal fan? That's strange. For me, I just love football. And as a kid, you like different different players. And obviously, when I signed for Arsenal, I think it was it was that. That was it for me. Yeah. Yeah. Were you... So I'm trying to think of the era, so I'm a little bit older than you, so my era that I remember, I grew up in the absolute glory years for Arsenal. Would you have grown up in the slightly more turbulent years of Arsenal? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes, I, I would yeah. have, yeah. Very coolly, now you're a product of the better years of Arsenal. That's kind of funny thinking about it like that, isn't it? Yeah, it's funny. I think, obviously, even when I come in, um, it wasn't like playing as good as we were right now, but we were still playing really well, so that's why I'm, I'm always so happy that I was able to, to come into an Arsenal team and obviously get into the first team. Um, but obviously, yeah, now we're, we're competing at the top of the Premier League and mm. we're back in the Champions League, so it's, 
it's nice to see that, that transformation, the progress. You're a huge part of that as well. I want to ask you about this picture here. Who's here and who is important to you? OK, they're all important to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, obviously, I know you guys would know Mr Harvey. Um, but yeah, they were all really important to me and they took, took really good care of me, of course, in PE and we won some trophies for the school mm. as well. So it was, it was a nice moment. So that's why, obviously, I went back to see them and actually, I actually saw them yesterday as well. Oh, did you? Yeah, Do you have quite them. a good relationship with them ongoing? Yeah, I have them on WhatsApp, so I speak with them every now and again. Um, Mr Harvey's an Arsenal fan, of course, so he's always wishing me the best and congratulating <laughs> me as well. Some of them are Tottenham fans, I'm not going to mention no, them. No, that's a but, shame. Um, Should we just cut the rest of them? Yeah, just, just keep the Arsenal fans separate in the there. <laughs> but um, yeah, they're, they're really nice people and I'm always grateful to them. PE, I imagine, was like one of your best, if not your best subject, but you're actually quite academic as well, aren't you? Yeah. So did you get quite good grades? Yeah, I got really, things? really, really good grades. What were they? Like, my age group, it changed from like A's and B's to like numbers. Oh. So I got like sevens and eights. So what would the equivalent of that be? A seven is an A, and an eight is an A star. Oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking A star, A student. Yeah. Wow. In what? Like, what were your? What so, did you choose in like GCSEs? I chose. So obviously you have the core subjects, yeah. and I chose Spanish, business, and P. But I had to drop out of Spanish because obviously having to go to the academy on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'd miss the whole day of school and Spanish was on Tuesdays and Thursdays and it's impossible to learn a language if you're not in the class. So I just had to drop out, but I completed the rest. There is a part of me as an Arsenal fan that is glad that you don't know Spanish because if we ever have interest from Real Madrid, which I imagine is probably quite prevalent in your life, I would like you to not know Spanish so that perhaps you would not feel comfortable moving over there. <laughs> I, don't fair know, I don't know Spanish, so Good, it's excellent, okay. that's a great thing to say. <laughs> um, wow, do you know what? I got one A star in religious studies. Really, are we? <laughs> I'm not even joking. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Wow. Let's move along. Let's move along to this okay. one here. So this is the Academy photo, right? Yeah. You do, even then. And how old do you think you're there? No, this is under 15. I remember the, this year I was with Freddie, so... So you look, I mean, compared to... <laughs> maybe it's just the guy you're sat next to. <laughs> you, look, you look like a man. They all look like yeah, kids. Yeah, yeah. You look like a footballer already, is what I'm trying to say. Did you feel like when you were in the academy, you were just like raring to go, you were ready to go into the first team? Uh, I wouldn't say first team, but um, when I was this age, I started to play a lot more with the, the olders. So I would play with the 16s and sometimes the 18s. Um, and of course, Freddie, he did push me a lot. He believed a lot in me. So when I got a bit older, I think maybe I was 16, mm. he brought me all the way to the 23s. Wow. So he gave me a lot of confidence. And then um, shortly after, um, he was made the interim coach and again, pushed me again and, and let me play, so... Yeah. Did it feel quite special for you, as a part of Arsenal, to have a coach like Freddie Lindbergh, who had such an amazing history with the club as well? Yeah, it was really special for me and I made sure I asked him a lot of questions. Um, he played in my position, so he had a lot of advice for me, so... It was a really nice moment for me to obviously have him as a coach and, and learn from him. Is there one bit of advice that always stands out? Do you still hear his voice in certain situations on the pitch? Yeah, or nah. off the pitch? Do you know when, <laughs> when I was this age? Because I was strong. Like, every time I was in front of goal, I just used to smash it. Like, Freddie always, he's the one who taught me to, like, be more calm and, like, just finesse the ball. Um, so when you see me finessing the ball, you know, a part of that is, is called from Freddie. So. That's Freddie. Yeah. I love that so much. That makes so much sense as well, that Freddie's like, no, 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 there's a better way of doing this. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to be like, I'm going into a completely different realm, don't worry. Don't put this in the cup, but when I was younger, I remember Freddie Lundberg on, like, massive, massive billboards in his underwear. Oh, the carbon cut. Yeah, right? That's, <laughs> sorry, but it's, it's football heritage, OK? Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about this moment. Explain what this moment is. So this is me signing my first professional contract at Arsenal. Yeah, I was, wow. I was really nervous. I didn't even know hey. how to smile. Look at <laughs> <No>. my, <laughs> my face. I didn't want to say anything. But you know when you're like, do I, do I smile? Do I look serious? You're, yeah. you're in between. I'm just in between. You, <laughs> but you look like you mean business. Yeah. But you also could be a cardboard cutout. I could Do you know be. what I mean? I feel like, yeah. does that pen even have any ink in it? Is, <laughs> it, a real, is it a real pen? It's is a, that a real contract? It's not even a real contract. It's not a real contract. Wait, 
Wait, what is it? I don't know if you can see it. It looks it, like but... a shopping list. <laughs> Do you know what else bothers me about that? That they didn't get this out of shot? I don't know why. Oh, is that, that like... Is that they... <laughs> you know, I've never even noticed that. It's really I've never noticed that. that really bothers me. But anyway, it's a lovely... <laughs> Apart from all of that, yeah. it's a really nice photo. No, it's, it's hanging up in my house, actually. <laughs> is it really? Yeah. Good. OK, let's move on to this one. Okay. Now, this is important because this is your... Is this your first appearance for the club? So you came off the bench, Europa League. Tell us what happened. Yes, so this is my debut. I think it might have been the coldest night of my life as well. <laughs> I actually couldn't feel my toes, but wow. I didn't care. I just wanted to play. Mm. So obviously we was in like bin bags, not bin bags, the... The heater thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah to, to keep, keep us warm. warm. And obviously Una's called me, yeah. come to warm up quickly, come back and I was ready so quickly. And yeah, he's, he's given me my debut and the rest is history. I think this is something I'll never forget. And what was that era like under your memory? I think for me it was like, it was really special mm. um, because I can never obviously forget him. He's the one who gave me my debut. Obviously you can see all the work that's been put in to get to that stage and obviously he gave me that moment. And yeah, he gave me a lot of confidence as well. It wasn't just this, he gave me so many more appearances. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm always grateful to him. Do you look at what he's doing at Villa and think, I'm pleased for him, or like, as a coach, did you, when he coached you, what were those things that you were like, wow, this guy is great? Do you know, I'm really happy for him, you know? Like, every time mm. we play against him, I always make sure I try and like, say hello to him and just say thank you as well. But um, yeah, he was, he was a really nice man, um, a really nice coach as well, and I really enjoyed, obviously, my time under him. Well, we have uh, two of the youngsters making up the bench today. Okay, yo, Saka. He's played a couple of times in European competition, only 17 years of age. So this is you coming off the bench for Alex Awobi. Yeah. Do you remember what game this is? Do you remember that, what you were feeling at that moment? <sighs> yeah, I think you can see I've got a bigger smile. <laughs> well, at least a, a bit of a That's bigger smile. That's more genuine than that one, yes. isn't it? <laughs> it's more genuine than that one. Um, but yeah, this is my Premier League debut um, against Fulham, New Year's Day, if I'm correct. Yeah, it was really nice, apart from obviously the fact I didn't, really, I didn't touch the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> you can kind of rewrite history. We can make this, we can cut in bits from different games and make it look like you were a world beater <laughs> in that game. It's fine, you scored five goals. What was it like for your family, especially like you say on a New Year's Day, it's just had Christmas and was it quite like, are they really excited or nervous for you at this point? Do you know what? I think it's opposite. I think my mum, nervous, my dad just, excited yeah. um, but they've both followed me along my whole journey and they've been at every game no matter where I play um, so yeah I think they'll both just look at this moment and be proud um, for life mm -hmm. and yeah we've got the shirt hanging up in our house oh. as well so there's a bit of all these memories in my house yeah. so yeah we don't forget it. Saka nice very nice can he finish it oh yeah wonderful from Bukayo Saka does your dad still support Newcastle or is he Arsenal now? No, he's, he does support Newcastle anymore. <laughs> Tell me what's happening here. OK, this is my first goal for Arsenal. It's one of my better goals as well, you know. <laughs> I never thought my first goal was... The stance still... is perfect, isn't it? Yeah. Like, everything looks great in this photo. Yeah, you can tell this is going to be a goal. Saka again. Looking to curl one and he does! His first goal for Arsenal! Yeah, it was a really nice strike and one of my first like big European away nights and it was under Unai as well and yeah, scored late on in the game, I was so happy. Did it feel really special? Like when you score your first professional goal, how much time have you got to, for, to let it sink in or are you straight back into the game? Well, I don't know, like when I scored, I was just like, is this the feeling? Like, <laughs> oh my gosh, like, I didn't know how to feel. So I just sort of ran to the crowd and yeah, I didn't know what to do. It was only until after the game that um, like, I really just thought about what I'd done. I, I got kept in the team. Like, we played three days later against Aston Villa at the Emirates, so I didn't have too much time to, like... Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But um, it was still a really nice moment. When you're that age and you score your first goal for Arsenal, did you know what your celebration was going to be? And did you watch it back and go, that's got to be better than that? <laughs> <laughs> and did you practise it? <laughs> <laughs> So I didn't practice it, no. Um, I, don't, I don't think I knew what my celebration was going to be. I think I just put my arms out. Like, I nice. didn't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't a really Bellingham know. before Bellingham sort of thing. Yeah, sort of, sort of, yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, just done that. Um, 
and just sort of just try to take in the moment. Mesut Ozil was rested on Thursday in the Europa League and he's only on the bench today. Bakayo Saka makes his full Premier League debut in his place. First Premier League start, so you knew that you were starting, right? How much notice did you get? I think I found out the day before. So did you get loads of extra tickets for your friends and family? <laughs> I got as many as possible, yeah, I got yeah. as many as possible, yeah. <laughs> I think the greatest thing why Arsenal fans love you so much is you, you just came into that team as if you'd been there the whole time and you look so seamlessly, uh, no nerves or anything like that, but were you feeling nerves? I think obviously I had a bit of nerves, but once the game started and I got a few touches, I was like, OK, I'm enjoying this. And yeah. yeah, I was enjoying it, but obviously I got taken off at half-time because we got a red card. Oh, Maitland-Niles has flown in there on Neil Taylor. It is a second yellow card for Ainsley Maitland-Niles. It wasn't the best um, first start, but obviously the first half I played pretty well. Did you afterwards, you like, oh, why did you do that? <laughs> you cut my, my full debut, my first. Nah, my to be fair to him, he, he obviously <laughs> came to me and consoled me, but I just said, you know what, it's OK, we won 2-1. Aubameyang smashed in a free kick in the last minute. It's Aubameyang! This is the era that the silverware starts to come and it's the era where Mikel Arteta joins the club. So when mm -hmm. he joined, what were your first impressions of him? What did he say to you as well? Did he take <laughs> you to one side on your own? I think he was sort of like straight down to business. Um, <laughs> I think we had a game like two days after he joined. He played me in his first game, so I was like, OK, this coach, he believes in me. Um, and yeah, from then on, I just felt the belief he had in me, the confidence, the amount of games he was playing me. And mm. I was like, OK, he, he really trusts me, so I need to repay it. It's quite amazing when you look at all the, the people in there, you've got like so many old faces. Cedric, Leno, David Luiz. Is that Shaka in the, yeah, that must be. Is that Shaka there? No, who's that? Who's that? I can't figure out who that Please. is. That's not Shaka, is it? Oh, isn't that's it Papa. Yeah. Papa, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. that's Papa, Papa, I think. Hang on, don't, ugh, Papa. This used to drive me mad. Don't even, there's no Pastadopoulos. point. I don't know how to say it. <laughs> I, I call him Papa. <laughs> yeah, Papa. it is. He looks so <laughs> different like that. OK, and then more trophies. So you've got Community Shield, you're lifting it. That was an important game for you as well, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. This was the recent one this season. And obviously we beat City. We haven't beat them for a while, so it was, it was really significant for us as a team. What was more important that day? Was it the fact that you pick up the Community Shield or was it the fact that you, you beat City? Because that was a real That's mark, a good question. <laughs> that is a good question. I think it has to be both. I can't really pick one. Mm. Obviously, as a player, you love to win trophies and silverware. But obviously, City have been a big rival for us, especially last season. And I don't remember a game I've played where I've beat them for a long time, or if it's even ever happened. So <laughs> that was really significant to me to be able to, to beat them. And a good season because Arsenal are back in the Champions League and mm -hmm. you're now playing in these huge matches. You've sailed through the group. Tap in for Saka. Shirley! Saka made it look so easy. Arsenal fans haven't been there since, what, 2017 in the knockouts. For you personally, Champions League football, is that something that you always dreamed of? And did it, has it lived up to expectations so far? Yeah, so I've been to the Emirates a few times um, to watch. Um, I actually watched Barca versus Arsenal as well. That was Barca in their prime of Messi, Suarez, Neymar. So, you know, I've seen those type of nights and obviously when you see it, you just want to be a part of it. One more for you before we let you go. Captain's armband in this one. Mm -hmm. What's that feeling when you get to do that? I don't know if I can say this is the biggest moment for me. Um, obviously, I think if you compare the start image to that, um, I've come and been Arsenal my whole life, so to wear that, that band was, was really special. And this is a proud moment for that young man. Bakayo Saka leading out an Arsenal side as captain for the very first time. Be able to lead the boys out and speak to them. <laughs> it, was, it was funny, because obviously, I'm still quite young and yeah. obviously me speaking in the team talk, some of the boys found it funny, but <laughs> it was a really nice moment for me and we won the game 5-0, so yeah, this is a day I'll never forget and I've got that armband in my house, in my room, just on top of my bed, so 
Yeah. What's the best shirt that you've swapped? Who's the one that you that you prize the most? I've got a Thierry Henry shirt. He gave Do me a you? shirt, he signed it to me, yeah. That's really special to me. So yeah, I would say that's the most special. One. Yeah, that's the one, that's the one for me. I didn't swap it, but that's my most special shirt. I think that's a pretty good one, to be fair. Yeah. Right, Bakayo, we're going to let you go because I know you've got to go and train, haven't you? Yeah, I do. <sighs> Sorry about that. <laughs>